Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and welcome to my Sassanid Empire Faction Guide for Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion. Today we're going to be talking about the Sassanids, their units, their position on the campaign map, and just some general strategy and all of that. So, we'll get started straight away. The Sassanids start off in this sort of darker blue region, sort of in the Middle East kind of region to the east of the Eastern Roman Empire. Stay so about as east as it gets. Uh, in this game. The difficulty factor is estimated moderate. Honestly, I think this is one of the easier campaigns. I definitely think the Assassins are quite easy because, well, we'll talk about why uh, in a minute, but I quite like their starting position. I think they've got some great units. You know, they're not having it too bad at all. To win the campaign, you have to hold 20 settlements, including Aegyptus, which is this Egyptian region, uh, Palestinia, and Thracia. Thracia being this region, of course. So, the Assassinids have an excellent mix of forces, including cataphracts and elephants. And that is the big, big strength of the Assassinids, is their heavy cavalry. That is the thing that puts fear into the Eastern Roman Empire's heart, and it will be the thing that hopefully will allow you to conquer the whole map relatively easily. Certainly in the early game, in my opinion. So, let's just get straight into it and talk about the Sassanid units. So, here are the Sassanid units, and as you can see, quite early on, there are some great cavalry units, but we'll get into that in a second. We'll start off right at the very bottom, which is the peasants. Peasants, which, as I say every time, pretty trash. They're basically farmers. Attack of two, defense of five, poor morale. Yeah, I mean, not great. These ones are fast moving. I don't think all peasants are fast moving, but honestly, all their fast moving is going to be energized into the form of them routing and running away from the enemy, not actually fighting in any capacity. They are not great, only really use them to garrison settlements that are never going to be attacked, but don't rely on them on the battlefield. So then we have Kurdish Javelinmen. So I quite like Javelinmen, not as much as my horse archers of course, but still pretty solid indeed. Eight missile attack, particularly for Javelinmen, isn't too bad at all. That's nothing to be scoffed at at all. Attack of five, defense of nine. Obviously these guys aren't meant to be in the melee. They can hold up a little bit in the melee, particularly the defense of nine isn't too bad at all. And the fact that they have good stamina means they can hold up for a little bit more, fight for a little bit longer without getting tired and eventually breaking. So not too bad, but honest, honestly, you're not going to be using these guys in the melee anyway. So that's a pretty much non-factor, or you shouldn't be unless things go terribly wrong. So not, not too bad javelinman at all, nothing particularly amazing in my opinion. Then we have Levy Spearmen. These are raised from the poorest in society, men taking in to the army in lieu of paying their taxes. So, attack of 6, defense of 15. Uh, these guys aren't terrible. They're not amazing either. They don't really have a, a, a big punch to them. They won't hold forever. They're not, you know, in my experience, I haven't found them to, to be amazing spearmen. Great spearmen will have good morale, and it means they'll be able to fight all day. But saying that, a 15 defense isn't too bad at all, there's nothing again to be scoffed at, uh, it means that they can hold up particularly in tight city streets if that's what you're doing, defending a city, or you know in a nice line in a defensive battle or whatever, they can hold their own, uh, particularly against cavalry because they have that bonus fighting cavalry, so not too bad at all, 15 defence isn't, isn't terrible, but still they don't really pack that punch, they don't get a huge amount of kills, really they are to be used against cavalry and pretty much cavalry only. I mean, you can fight them against infantry, but if you get around the back of them, any kind of good charge, and they're not going to survive for that long. Then we have, and I'm sorry if my pronunciation is wrong, Sukdian warriors. I hope that's right. Uh, they are the finest infantry available to the Sassanids, which, by the way, we've only got, what, like, like four units in, and this is all the infantry the Sassanids have. They are a very, very cavalry-based faction, so there's not a huge array of infantry, but still, these guys are pretty solid. Uh, tough, well-disciplined, heavily armed, and armoured. Attack of 10 isn't amazing, but it's nothing too bad. Defense of 19 is very, very solid, though. If you compare them to the more defensive type unit, the Levy Spearmen, actually got a significantly higher defense, which is cool. And the good morale means they're obviously going to stand up for a lot longer. As I say always, any unit with good morale is a good unit as far as I'm concerned. Effective against armor means they're going to be useful in the later game because obviously the further you get, other opposition units are going to have better armor, so you need stuff to be able to penetrate and counteract that, and these warriors can certainly do that indeed. And a charge bonus of 4 is again pretty damn solid for infantry, nothing terrible at all. 4 charge means that they can actually cause quite a lot of impact, be a good impact troop, a good clever charge into a side of a unit, and you're going to be causing a lot of damage with these bad boys. Do quite like them indeed. Uh, yeah. 
And then we're going to move on to Mountain Slingers. Yes, these are highly skilled troops who can bombard enemies with a hail of cruel and effective missiles. Now, saying that sounds pretty cool, but a missile attack of three is pretty underwhelming. I mean, what I don't understand is a rock that is slung has a missile of three, but a javelin has a missile of eight. I suppose it kind of makes sense, but I don't know. To me, it doesn't, doesn't make perfect sense. But they are okay in the melee, not in the attack, but a defense, again, similar to the javelin man. They can kind of hold their own to the extent where they're not going to break straight away, but honestly, they're not going to last a huge amount of time. They are not melee troops. It is a disaster. If you're relying on them in the melee, that is for sure. But all right is missile troops. What I quite like about these guys is the bonus versus elephants and chariots. That's probably their main advantage. If you're having struggles with elephants and chariots, then these guys are pretty cool to use because they can kind of counteract that a bit more. Obviously, the good stamina and fast moving makes them good as skirmishers because they're not going to get tired too quickly. And that's pretty much it to say about them. Nothing amazing, but probably the best unit you're going to have to deal with these elephants and chariots, uh, etc. Then we get on to the only archers we're going to have, or the only infantry archers, I should say, probably, um, which are the desert archers. A missile attack of seven. Okay, not amazing. It's actually worse than the javelin men, which is rare for javelin men to have a higher missile attack than archers, but so be it. Again, not particularly amazing in the melee. Three and seven attack and defense, respectively. But these guys also have that bonus versus elephants and chariots, which a lot of archers don't have. But these guys, this army particularly set up to deal with elephants and chariots, so... That's pretty cool indeed, but what you've got to remember is, you're the faction with the elephants, so really I don't think you're going to be facing that many elephants in the game, but you never know, you might be, but really you're most effective against yourself, which is kind of odd, but whatever. Yeah, these guys, pretty standard archers, nothing too amazing, they haven't got a, they've got a long range, sorry, they have got a long range, now long range is very, very cool because it means you can hit your enemy before they hit you, which is pretty badass indeed. I do like a long range missile, like I always cite, I cite the Cretan Archers in Rome Toad's War, excellent unit because you can fire from such a distance and they're going to cause a, a, a range of effect from, from their greater range. So pretty cool indeed and the flaming missiles can scare troops and so on and so forth. So Desert Archers, very, very solid. They would be very, very average, but actually their long range missiles make them a little bit better than average, that is for sure. Now we're gonna get on to Camel Raiders. Now I've never been a big fan of camels, I say this every time, I'm not a big fan of camels because I find them relatively unmaneuverable, kind of, um, un they're, they're a little bit wild and they're not the fastest things ever, but what they are good at is scaring horses. So if you are going against the faction, particularly one of the um, horde factions, which have a ton of horses, then the Camel Raiders can actually do a good job because they can kind of counteract that, make those horses break earlier, which is nice to see. An attack of six, defense of 14. So attack of six is an amazing, in fact, that's relatively low, but a defense of 14 isn't too bad for camels at all. But the charge bones of five makes the attack not quite as bad. Um, so actually they can be quite an effective unit if you charge in to a certain position, certain angle, uh, relatively quickly and effectively, they can do a pretty good job. But as I say, I like these guys most for the, st the uh, scaring horses trait. That's what they're called to, to do, to be honest. Now we're going to get onto the good, good stuff. The reason why most people pick the Sassanids, the reason why I think this is not too much of a difficult campaign, and it is because of units like this. Now, this is the camels, first of all, but Armoured Camel Raiders, or Riders, well that's interesting actually, these guys are called Raiders and these guys are called Riders, never noticed that before, but okay, fair enough, these ones, I think Raiders sounds better, but these are armoured, so they definitely are. Attack of 8, defence of 21 for a camel, I mean, that's pretty cool, attack, a charge bonus, sorry, of 6, good morale, very well armoured, and that means these guys are really going to stand up, and camels, you know, aren't particularly notorious for standing up, but, hell, these guys will stand up for a long time, they'll fight, it is tough to break any unit. I mean, this is basically the cataphract version of a camel, and any cataphract unit is good because they're just so hard to get down, really hard, even if you have spearmen. The defense of 21, they're just going to stand and fight, and good morale, they can do a lot of damage in that time before they break. So, definitely a very good unit. I prefer the horse variant, which we'll have a look at in a second, the horse variant of these, because like I've discussed, not a huge fan of camels personally, but still, if this is your thing and you like camels, this is about as good as it gets, so that's good for you, I suppose. And of course, these guys scare horses. I would say they would definitely scare anyone. They scare me just looking at them. They look pretty badass. Now we're going to move on to cataphracts. Now, I mentioned cataphracts a few seconds ago. 
arguably one of the most, well definitely one of the strongest units in the base game of Rome Toads War, and the same goes for Barbarian Invasion, cavalry units uh, anyway. So an attack of 6 isn't amazing, but the charge bonus of 9 is. So what they are really good at is they are an impact troop. You have that one charge, the one charge that can decide the fate of the battle, turn the fate of the battle, if you have a really strong unit of infantry, they're locked in a, a battle at the front with your infantry, which is probably going to be a little bit inferior. The cataphract charging into the back of the side, I mean, that's going to very likely break or do a huge amount of damage to that unit, which is very likely going to turn the uh, tide of the battle. But once they're in, once they've started fighting, they will fight all damn day because they're good morale. They're not going to break very easily. Very well armoured means they're basically resistant to most archers, which is awesome. And also it means they're going to take very, very little damage, coupled with 32 defense, which is about as high as you're going to get for heavy cavalry. Amazing stuff, really amazing stuff. I mean, once these guys charge in, they will just sit there and churn their enemies down all day if they haven't broken already, which they very likely have. That powerful charge is so damn good. Really, really amazing. Like I said there, few can withstand their ponderous lance charge. And well, I would agree. I certainly wouldn't be able to stand up to that. Very, very cool unit. Cataphracts are absolutely badass. And if you get these guys, if you rush to the sort of higher level of stables, um, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, actually, when we look at the campaign map, then, man, I mean, you can just completely dominate the Middle East and beyond with these guys. Absolutely amazing stuff. Then we get on to the Clibonari. Clibonari? I hope I'm saying that right. Super heavy cavalry with both men and horses armoured from head to toe, intended to wear down an enemy in close attacks. Now, basically what these guys are, let's just forget the missile attack for a second. Very, very good heavy cavalry, if you forget the missile attack. Uh, very, very good heavy cavalry. Similar to the cataracts, not quite as good because their defence is 6 lower and their attack and charge bonus is slightly lower as well. But, damn, I mean, these guys are still good. Very, very solid unit. Then you give them the missile attack of 7, meaning that they can sort of do a skirmishing job and actually have a attack from a range as well, meaning they're more diverse. Man, this is amazing. I mean, this is really, really top-tier stuff uh, we're talking about here. They use the missile weapon before charging, so it's kind of similar to sort of like, if you imagine Hastati, which tend to use their missile weapon, their uh, peeler, and then they move forward. That's kind of what the Klibonari are good at doing, um, and it just means they're so effective in a sort of multifaceted way, not just with the range, but also with that powerful charge. And again, the fact that they are so heavily armoured, even though they haven't got that good morale, the fact they're so heavily armoured means that they're not going to take many knocks anyway. So their morale isn't going to be hit to the extent where they're going to think about breaking because they're going to look around and think, well, all my friends are still alive. I'm not going to run away like a little coward. And that's what they're so good at. So Clibonari, great unit. Again, another really damn solid unit of cavalry. I could go on all day about how good the Sassanid cavalry is. And I will, because we have the Sassanid General, or the Clibonari Immortals. A powerful guard of able and fierce Clibonari Immortals. These iron horsemen are an elite to be used at the moment of crisis, I mean. I mean, I've gone on about the cavalry, but... This is, this is top, top stuff. Attack of 10, defense of 30. Good morale, very well armoured, good stamina, I'm going to keep going over that stuff. Missile attack of 11, very, very good for missile cavalry, very, very top tier stuff. 11, missile attack is amazing, 2 hit points meaning you effectively have to kill the general twice to flip and get him dead. I mean, does it doesn't really need to be, it doesn't really need to be specified or for me to go on and on about how good these guys are, you can see for yourself. And the fact that they are called Iron Horsemen, I mean, it sounds like something from the flipping apocalypse is coming down, okay? Badass stuff can churn through anything and can also hit them at a distance. One of the best units of cav you're going to see in this game, for sure. Now we move on to elephants. You've seen elephants before, I've talked about elephants before, but these elephants are, well, they're pretty cool. I mean, elephants are pretty badass. Inherently, they are pretty badass. Um, they have a missile attack, meaning again, they have that sort of uh, diversity, which are, uh, some other elephants don't have, uh, in fact. 12 hit points, 12 hit points. So, although they've only got a defense of five, the 12 hit points means they can still stand up all day. Good morale, again, they're less likely to break, but they can run amok. Elephants, I've discussed elephants in the past, and they are 
theoretically very, very good, and they can be very, very good, especially if you're using them. I find them relatively easy to deal with, just with a ton of flipping archers and making sure that they run a mock very early and then they can kill their own troops because they're just running around like crazy maniacs. But when you're using them, if you use, you use them effectively, then you're almost unstoppable because what you can do is just charge the elephants into a weak area, pretty much guarantee a break, and that can trigger a mass route across the whole of the opposition army. So elephants, very, very good indeed if you use them effectively. But even then, the 12 hit points means that even if you're an idiot and you charge them somewhere where you shouldn't, they're quite likely to stand up and fight anyway. Then we have the Nomad Archer Cavalry. Basically, these are horse archers. I like horse archers. They are overpowered as skirmishers because they, you know, you can hit your opposition, but they can get nowhere near you because they're so fast and they're so flipping agile that you just physically can't get to them. So even though in the melee, they're nothing amazing at all, five and nine respectively, although a four charge bonus isn't too bad. So if you're right at the end of the battle and you flipping need something, you need anything, you need any charge, actually they can uh, be all right. An eight missile attack is nothing to be scoffed at at all. There is plenty of horse archers with a lower missile attack, so nothing too bad at all. Very, very solid unit of uh, cavalry. Obviously not really comparable to these guys, but you know, still. A solid unit you can get them earlier in the game good good guys and then the um these which is the um what do you call it like siege equipment um i've talked about them before i talked about them i believe in the yes in the eastern roman empire faction guide so if you want to hear me talk about ballista onagers and heavy onagers go to the eastern roman empire faction guide that's where i talk about them it's the same for pretty much all factions so there's no point in me going over them again so they are the Sassanid units, let's just get straight into it and talk about some strategy. And here we are, now first thing, like I always say when I do these faction guides, the Fog of War is off, I never play with the Fog of War off, the only reason I am showing you the Fog of War off is because it's easier just to show you what's around and where your starting position is if I can physically show you what's going on without the Fog of War obscuring it. But obviously I consider it cheating personally to have the Fog of War off when you actually play, but it's just easy to show you what's around if you can actually see it. So, as you saw there, a people in flight, that is the uh, Vandals and the Huns. They are the Horde factions. If you've played this game before, you will know about them already. Not hugely affecting you. They will likely go down this way and either attack the Eastern Roman Empire or the Western Roman Empire. Anyway, Assassinids. So, we start off with five regions. I believe it's five. Yes, it is five. Good. My knowledge is correct. Um, I'm not going to say all their names because, for example, I don't even know how to say that. I mean, what what is that? So test, whatever. I shouldn't even try. Um, but you start off with quite a nice position. I like the Sassanid position. Um, they have a very comfortable starting area because, well, there's no factions over here. So you'll pretty much have a permanently defensible uh, region along here. There are rebels to the north and the south, and there's only one faction really that you're going to go for. I mean, you could go for the Roxolani, not worth it in my uh, estimation, that would make no sense to me. The one faction you need to fully focus on is the Eastern Roman Empire. And the Eastern Roman Empire have it tough at the beginning, and again, I mentioned that in the Eastern Roman Empire faction guide, because they're going to have the barbarians or the Horde factions, whatever, coming from the north. They're likely going to have the Western Roman Empire break the alliance at some point, and then they've got you on this side. So really, once they're trying to deal with these guys, you could just say, look, we're going to come in through the back door and just absolutely dominate them. It, uh, yeah, I should probably rephrase that, but whatever. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be easy. It, it should be relatively easy. This is why I do not think the Sassanid campaign is too difficult. Then what would be my first target? My first target would be Antioch. Because, well, likely, they're likely to move troops out there pretty much immediately anyway. But even if they don't, there's quite a small garrison there. It's epic stone walls, so once you take it, you're, you're living nicely, man. You're having a nice old day because you've got a very, very defensible settlement. And I believe these guys have some pretty damn good stables, which means that you can recruit all the heavy cavalry you want to absolutely dominate the Middle East. So what would I do? I would probably focus my region on the, uh, sorry, my my force on the Anatolia region first. I mean, you can go for Egypt, the Egyptus region, and the Turkey region. Personally, I would just focus on the Turkey region because this area is inherently weaker anyway. And they're likely to move troops up from Alexandria, Jerusalem, and Philadelphia um, anyway. So once you have dealt with the Turk, or I'm calling them the Turks, the Turkish region, Anatolia, whatever you want to call it, um, was it Asia Minor, if you want to deal with this 
Once you've dealt with this, then you can just get a boat, hop down, and these sediments will be pretty much empty. Alexandra, Jerusalem, etc. So that's what I would do. There's not a huge amount of strategy more than that, to be honest. I wouldn't bother too much with the rebel sediments. Um, sediments like is it Jumartha? Yeah pretty much useless i mean that you can take at your own leisure uh, and when you, whenever you want but i would just take full advantage of the fact i mean cotes is quite a useful one um, i would take full advantage of just the fact that the the eastern roman empire have a tough time what with rebellions what with the fact that they are completely surrounded and they're likely to move all their troops over to the actual byzantine area where there is a uh, constantinople uh, so you know they're gonna have a rough old time there's going to be a lot of vulnerable sentiments. I would just go from sentiment to sentiment, picking off areas that look weak, like Caesarea and um, Antioch is a really good one to take anyway. But Sidon, there's not a lot in there. Salamis, and once you start getting on a roll with it, with the heavy cavalry, you're just going to be absolutely rolling through the sentiments. Once you do that, it's kind of up to your discretion. But by that time, the Western Roman Empire will be very, very fra fragmented. Probably the barbarian hordes will be having a tough time because they've already had to try and churn their way through the Romans. And then, then you can just go on a field day. Once you've built up an empire along here, the rest of the game should be absolute steamroll. Because everyone else is going to be fragmented, but you, you've got a solid, secure empire. And you've taken advantage of, first of all, one of the most economically virtuous areas of the um, whole map. But also, you've taken advantage of one of the weaker factions in the sense that they have a weak starting position, which is the Eastern Roman Empire. So... That is essentially my strategy. I do not think the assassins are too hard at all. I wouldn't bother advancing further north than Cotes until you really, really are dominating. There's no point. This is a nice natural barrier. You have a couple of bridges over here. The Roxolani are unlikely to come down here anyway. If they do, just block up the bridges and they'll just charge their horses straight into your spears and you'll have they'll have a bad day. So wouldn't bother too much with Roxolani. Instead, go for the obvious target, the purple guys, the Byzantines, whatever they like to call themselves, Romans, whatever. Okay, so anyway, that is essentially it for my Sassanid faction guide. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with more of these very, very soon. Thank you very much, and goodbye.